Hello everyone. Today we're going to use materials to create some portal effects. There are two styles in the level, circular and rectangular, of course. We can also modify any shape within the material, including the image scene inside the portal. Okay, so to create this portal effect, we don't need any additional assets. We'll just use the system provided textures. So let's create a new material. Start by making a rectangular portal in the details panel. Select blend mode to translucent, unlit, and two-sided. Next, we need a noise texture and pixelate it. We've used this method many times, so it should be familiar to us. Add a panner to animate this pixelated texture. The value is the pixelation level of the texture, set to 24 by default. Set the speed to 0.1 and 0.2. OK, not bad. Let's reduce the intensity a bit by multiplying the output value by 0.1. Just like we did with the disturbance effect, add it to the text scored. We can see the pixelation effect already appearing in the text scored. If we think this doesn't look clean, we can use named root to add a node and call this node. This may look a little cleaner. Yes, then we get the R and G channels of the text scored respectively, because we need to control the mask of the portal in the horizontal and vertical directions respectively, and subtract 0.5 from the output value move the initial position to the center area of the UV. The two channels are the same, then take their absolute values. Next, we will use step and dynamic material parameters to control the mask range of the portal. Let's connect the R channel first. It is in the horizontal direction. We can name it our channel or U. The second is the G channel. Next, we only need to change this value to control the portal. We can see that it changes in the horizontal direction according to the change of this value. The maximum value should be 0.5, then the same steps for the vertical direction, change it to 0.4. Finally multiply them together. Now we get the basic shape of the portal, then we need to make a highlight effect on the edges for it. Copy these nodes. Add a float to the R and G parameters as the edge width. Here we can also use the dynamic material parameters. Set it to 0.03. Multiply them together so that we get a larger shape mask. Then we use the large mask below, subtract the small mask above to get the edge mask. Yes, we can see a great edge effect, then multiply it by the emissive color, or we can set its color in Niagara. Next we also need to add a texture to the area in the center of the portal. It can tell us where to teleport. So here we use the reflection vector and cube map to simulate the world inside the portal. Here are some system provided cube map. Preview it. We can see its internal area in it. Let's change to a better one. Yes, that is the scene in the preview. OK, this texture multiply it by the smaller mask. Add them together. Now take a look. It's very good. Connect it to the emissive color. As for the opacity, we use the larger mask because it includes the texture inside the portal and the emissive color of the edge. 
If we use the smaller mask, it will only show the texture inside the portal, and we can't see the emissive of the edge, so connect it to the larger mask. Okay, the material of such a portal is completed. We can control these parameter values in Niagara or in Blueprints to achieve the animation of the portal opening and closing. Next, let's try to animate the portal in Niagara. We can use Particle Renderer or Mesh Renderer. Apply the portal material we just created to the renderer and then add Spawn Burst. Now we can see the portal and the world inside. Modify the life cycle to once and lifetime a little longer, such as 15 seconds. As for the color, since we set the color ourselves in the material and did not use particle color, if we want to set the color in Niagara, just change the vector to particle color in the material. Next is the size of the portal. We can set it larger, 100. Finally, Add a dynamic material parameter in the particle update and use a curve to animate it. The R channel, use default curve. And set the value to 0.3 when the key data is 0.3, which is its maximum size when opened. It will remain at 0.3 for the rest of the time. Let the key data start to decrease at 0.9 and slowly return to 0. Then the G channel. They're pretty much the same, but we can make the key data values slightly different to give it a better effect. This time, when key data is 0.5, set the value to 0.4. It'll start decreasing at 0.8 and finally return to 0. As for the edges, Keep the default value of 0.03. This effect is okay, but it can be better. We can make the portal open horizontally first and then vertically. Let's set the starting key data of the G channel to 0.3. This will open the horizontal part first. Yes, it looks great now. Adjust the size to 200. Because we're using particle rendering, it will face the camera by default. If we want it to face only a fixed direction, we can set the alignment and facing mode to custom and then add particle facing. This will make it face a fixed axis. but we'll find that it may be rotated when viewed from the side, so here I recommend using Mesh Renderer. A simple plain mesh will do, add a material to it. The default orientation isn't what we want, so add initial mesh orientation, set the x-axis to 0.25, We can also modify the size of the mesh here, such as 2, OK, then such a very simple and practical portal effect is completed. Next, let's create a circular portal effect, their production principles are the same, we still use the pixelation effect. But this time we don't need these nodes. Search for radial gradient. A gradient circle. Similarly we also make it a pixelated process, but do not need panner. Connect these first, then set the radius and intensity for it. OK, so we get a pixelated circular mask. Then add radial speed to the noise texture. Vector to radial value. The speed should be faster, 1 and 1, then multiply by 0.1 to reduce the intensity of the noise texture. Add it to the pixelated circular mask. Add distance. Use float1 is compared with it to get the result. 
The closer the difference between this value and 1 is, the closer its output will be to 0. As we can see, its central area looks darker, and the edge is farther away from 1, so the output value will be larger. The next step is the same as before. We need step and dynamic material parameters. Our channel here is the size of the circle. Just connect it directly. Its value can be increased. We can see that this is also a portal open effect. Then we need another step to make an edge emissive color. So here we still need a parameter as the width of the edge. The default value is 0.03. There is no third parameter. OK, we have set it up. Oops, we made the wrong connection here. We should subtract the edge from the size. Then, subtract the smaller mask from the larger mask to get the edge. OK. The pixelation of this edge is a bit too strong. Let's increase the pixelation a bit to 64. Yes, that's the edge. Multiply it by a vector or particle color. A red. Next, multiply the smaller mask by the cube map texture, which is the interior of the portal, and add the edge. Connect them together and we'll get the emissive color part. For the opacity, use the larger mask again. OK, that's it. It's very simple. We can set this shape to any shape. Now go back to Niagara and apply this material. Of course, the size and edge need to be adjusted. The edge is still 0.03. Use a curve for the size. The key data increases from 0 to 0.3, the value is 0.8, and then it gradually decreases at the key data of 0.9, and finally returns to 0. The edge. We can also use a curve to give it some more variation. First, at the key data of 0.3, which is when the circle reaches its maximum size, we set the edge to 0.5. Then, when the data moves to 0.5, we set it to the default edge, 0.03. When the key data is 0.8, it still remains at 0.03. Finally, when it reaches 1, the value returns to 0.5. This makes it look more dynamic. Let's take a look at it in the level. It looks good. OK, we used materials to create these very simple portal effects. We can set it to any shape, and it's also very easy to change the internal portal into any scene we want. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.